Hey, what's up? It's one o'clock. It is the second day of July 2021. It is I, your grumbled brain, grumpy guide to all things gaming, the OGGM with another OGGM adventure into what the fuckery. As always, content warning with my product. You may find the topic disturbing or controversial or thought provoking or just plainly stupid and assume I'm an idiot, which would be correct. So I guess. Uh, our buddy Professor Dungeon Master put up a video earlier this week where he said Dungeon Masters are not storytellers and then proceeded to spend a large chunk of the video shilling his own product and how he does things but somewhere in there he was talking about Dungeon Masters are not storytellers I'm not sure if that was a question Dungeon Masters are not storytellers or a statement Dungeon Masters are not storytellers. Or like an accusation. Dungeon Masters are not storytellers. But that was the topic. Dungeon Masters are not storytellers. And that's a weird one because, yeah, they are. And no, they're not. It sort of depends upon what each individual's interpretation of that word means to them. Professor Dungeon Master, storyteller. So there is no right or wrong take on it because we all have our own idea of what a dungeon master does what a storyteller does because if you break a story down to its you know basic elements once upon a time something happened the end and a twist you know that that's a, that's a story that's every story ever something happens the end um uh the her the heroic journey you know, screenwriters, they all argue that there's a certain, only a limited amount of stories you can tell and only a limited amount of story, ways you can tell them. The, 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 the rub is trying to find unique ways to tell a story because there's only so many ways you can do it. I mean, even in Dungeons and Dragons, which is sort of this role-playing, sort of this open-ended, uh, I don't know what you're going to do next kind of thing. Um, there's still so only so many ways. I mean, even... With the infinite imagination available to human players, there actually is only so many limited ways to resolve the scenarios. They could come up with something clever that you didn't think of, but still, you know, there are only so, only so many ways to tell a story. So it breaks down to, again, what is your definition of the word storyteller? Because if you notice, the other term most often used for Game Master, Dungeon Master, is referee. And you have to remember that even though we call this a role-playing game, there is no set-in-stone rules on how to role-play, or what role-playing means, or what the rewards are for role-playing, or how to role-play your character. Again, it's unique to each and every one playing. So... How one player reacts to a DM story is going to be completely different to how a different player reacts to a DM story. And how one DM referees the story can be completely different. So there's no right or wrong way. At the end of the day, the DM's job is to interpret the rules and, you know, say, yes, you can or no, you can't. And start and stop that session. That's, that's the DM's job. And once upon a time, stuff happens. Three hours pass. Somebody knocks a soda over on the counter. Somebody brings up some mean joke that we spend two minutes to ten minutes laughing about. You know, then the game ends. We hand out the rewards and we go about our day. That's that's you know the game. The DM has told his her its story in that time frame by saying, "Once upon a time, players do stuff." The end. This will be continued next week. As a storyteller, you can get all Grand Shakespearean, Matt Mercery, uh, Chris Perkins, and dressed up in costumes and have props and, and, and effects and, and really in-depth human stuff that would rival Shakespeare. And you could be considered a great storyteller. You know, everybody says Matt Mercer is a great storyteller. Or you could just be a bare-bones, simple guy who's just like, all right, roll initiative. Um, okay, uh, Steve, what is your warrior's armor class? 
Uh, oh, yeah, dude, you just got hit by an arrow. Please take three points of damage. All right, uh, Steve, what are you doing? Oh, you're casting Sleep Spell? All right, uh, roll your damage. Okay, so uh, 13 hit points worth of my mooks or fall asleep. So this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. They all just keel over for no understandable reason and fall asleep, which means probably they're going to get stampeded over by the guys behind them if somebody doesn't pull them out of the way. Uh, all right, so, you know, and that's it. That could just be the DM's job. That, or they could be Mercer, somewhere in between. You know, who knows? It's, uh, so the DM is not a storyteller. Except, yeah, of course, kind of, they are a storyteller because they have to tell the story of the game and react to what the players do and change the scenarios based upon how the players react to the prompts given to them. If my adventure, my story is to move from Once Upon a Time to the end of this week, the players need to get the MacGuffin, and we've discussed that and we'll discuss it again, from where it is and take it someplace else. Classic, classic story. All right, so three things are going to happen in, so in order to get the players to take the MacGuffin to where it needs to go. That's the story I have planned, right? I could be all epically met mercery, or I could be bare bones, you know, me. <laughs> but then, you know, the players decide, hey, let's not go to place and get MacGuffin. I overheard somebody talking about something, the grandmother's house scenario, and let's do that instead. Hmm. Well, if I'm not a storyteller, how do I respond when they go off the rails? Do I just go, fuck you, no, you gotta go, and be that asshole? Chances are oh, I could. I could railroad him, but then I probably wouldn't see them again as players. Or do I rewrite the story to adapt to what they're doing? Okay, they're I don't know how they got this in their head. How can I use this to still tell the story of the adventure? Okay, well, I need them to get the MacGuffin, but I don't necessarily need the MacGuffin to be where it is. So I could take the MacGuffin and move it to where they're going, and I could just take the two or three encounters based around the MacGuffin, <coughs> reskin them, and change it to where they're going. So now they've gone off on this side crest because they overheard something and somehow, as players often do, they've got it in their head that this is what they need to do. You could table flip, but you could also, and the better thing to do is run with it. And so, and now you've just sort of rewritten the story as it's running to deal with what the player characters have done. So you still, at the end of that three, four hour can, you know scenario, can go, the end, MacGuffin achieved. Next week, once upon a time, we will tell a new story of the, three, th the next thing you need to do with that MacGuffin to move the adventure along. But I also know you might do some crazy stuff and I have to be prepared for that. So yes, I am a storyteller. Yes, a DM is a storyteller. Just depends what you think that word means. It could be a very limited in his or her take on storytelling, or it could be an extra tremendous. Did I just make up a word? <laughs> I'm a storyteller like Mr. Mercer and Mr. Perkins and Mr. Shakespeare. But again, your, your, your audience is only going to do so many things. There's only many, so many things you can tell. There's only stories you can do, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, Professor Dungeon Master, the DM is a storyteller because you do have to change the story based upon what your players do. And isn't it nice that you spent most of the video shilling your own stuff? All right, I'm your grumpy guy to all things gaming. If you disagree with this content, let me know. Uh, let's sh shoot for 475 subs by August 4th, because I don't think we're going to hit 500. Talk to you later, Steves.